Welcome to our daily devotion. The Methodist Church of Barbados invites you to sing, pray, and worship with us as we declare God's glory and celebrate His mighty acts. God, like the psalmist, we say, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Sovereign Lord, King of Kings, we bow at your feet in worship and adoration. You're all powerful and all wise, and we see your power and wisdom in all that you have made. Thank you for the beautiful flowers, the glorious sunsets, the ocean breeze that cools us down, the rain and the dew that waters the vegetation. Thank you, Lord. We are grateful for all that you have made. We thank you for each and every person in our lives. We thank you for each other and the blessedness of the community of faith. We thank you for the bonds of love and community that Bind us together. As we gather to worship you tonight, we count it a privilege that we can take the time to sit at your feet to learn from you. We expect that you will speak to us through the written and spoken word and through the hymns of faith. Prepare our hearts, dear Lord, and our minds by the power of your Holy Spirit to receive from you. May your word take root in our hearts and yield fruit that will last. We ask that you would bless those who labor diligently to make this broadcast available each night. We ask you that you bless them exceedingly and abundantly, more than they can ask or imagine. 
And we pray, O oh God, a special blessing on those who are tuned in and those who make it a part of their day to tune in every night. We pray, God, that you would meet each person at their point of need. And we pray, O oh God, that they will be so blessed that they will be a blessing to others. In Jesus' name we pray and we give thanks. Amen. from Genesis chapter 33, reading from verse 1 through 15. Now Jacob looked up and saw Esau coming, and 400 men with him. So he divided the children among Leah and Rachel and the two maids. He put the maids with their children in front, then Leah with her children, and Rachel and Joseph last of all. He himself went on ahead of them, bowing himself to the ground seven times until he came near his brother. But Esau ran to meet him and embraced him, fell on his neck and kissed him and wept, and they wept. When Esau looked up and saw the women and children, he said, who are these with you? Jacob said, the children whom God has graciously given your servant. Then the maids drew near, they and their children, and bowed down. Leah likewise and her children drew near and bowed down. And finally Joseph and Rachel drew near, and they bowed down. Esau said, What do you mean by all this company that I met? Jacob answered, To find favor with my Lord. But Esau said, I have enough, my brother. Keep what you have for yourself. Jacob said, No, please, if I find favor with you, then accept my present from my hand. For truly to see your face is like seeing the face of God, since you have received me with such favor. Please accept my gift that is brought to you. Because God has dealt graciously with me, and because I have everything I want. 
So he urged him, and he took it. Then Esau said, Let us journey on our way, and I will go alongside you. But Jacob said to him, My Lord knows that the children are frail, and that the flocks and herds which are nursing are a care to me. And if they are overdriven for one day, all the flocks will die. Let my Lord pass on ahead of his servant, and I will lead on slowly, according to the pace of the cattle that are before me and according to the pace of the children, until I come to my Lord in Seir. So Esau said, Let me leave with you some of the people who are with me. But he said, Why should my Lord be so kind to me? The word of the Lord. Tonight's meditation is titled, The Forgiveness is a Manifestation of Mercy. At first glance, the reading seems like a lovely story of family reunion and forgiveness between twin brothers until we dig a little deeper. Digging a little deeper means going back to the story Genesis chapter 25 story where we find Jacob and Esau as young men at the center of a dysfunctional family and the drama that accompanies such dysfunction. In chapter 25, it is noted that Isaac loved Esau because he was fond of game, 
but Rebekah loved Jacob. The mother favored Jacob and the father favored Esau. Showing favoritism to a child is a sure way to start sibling rivalry that often moves from childhood into adulthood. And Jacob and Esau were no different. Once when Jacob was cooking a stew, Esau came in from the field and he was famished. And he asked Esau, he asked Jacob to give him some of the red stew. And Jacob said, first sell me your birthright. Esau said, I am about to die of what use is a birthright to me. Jacob replied, swear to me first. So he swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. Jacob saw an opportunity to take what was rightfully Esau's and he took it. So it's no surprise that shortly before Isaac is about to die, and as was the custom, called for Esau the firstborn to bestow a blessing upon him and ends up blessing Jacob through deceit that was authored by his mother, Rebecca. This is the backdrop to the story that was that we read just now. In those days, the firstborn, if it was a boy, that child would get a double portion of the inheritance. In 2 Chronicles 21, 3, the writer noted that when King Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat died, he gave his children many gifts of silver, gold, and valuable possessions. But he gave the kingdom to Jehoram because he was the firstborn. So we see that the firstborn had a special place in the family. And Rebecca knew better because she knew that Esau was born first. But as she listened to Isaac and Esau's conversation, she instructed Jacob to go in, pretend to be Esau, and get the blessing. When Esau learned what his brother had done, he vowed to kill Jacob once the period of mourning for Isaac had ended. Again, Rebekah found out about this plan and she warned Jacob about what was going to happen and she told him to flee to her brother's house. So this reunion between brothers that we, we just read about is taking place about 20 years later. It is evident that Jacob was still afraid of Esau and tried to appease Esau with gifts. This, this sending of the gifts forward and then putting the maids and the wives to line up in order of value shows his fear. He is not quite sure how Esau would receive him. And that is why he assumed this posture of humility and, and servant, servanthood. This arrangement was just in case Esau was hostile toward him. The bowing down seven times was to show subordination to Esau. In this act, he was giving back the blessing that he stole when he allowed Isaac to bless him. On the other hand, Esau had moved past his anger and was just happy to see his brother. The text says Esau ran to meet him and embraced him and fell on his neck and kissed him and they wept together. 
Esau did not want or need his brother's gifts and only took them after Jacob insisted. Have you been going to family reunions and family gatherings with tension and undercurrents? Are you still angry for things about things that were said 10 years ago about you and your children? Or are you harboring unresolved anger against a family member who might have done something to you or a member of your immediate family? I am suggesting that when we, we gather as family and friends, we should do all that's in our power to, to resolve the differences and the conflicts and the difficulties. We should make time to have the difficult conversations. And it ought to be done in a spirit of mercy so that forgiveness is sought and received so that we can have better relationships with our family and friends. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 18, Peter was suggesting that seven times be the limit on forgiveness, that someone ought to have a limit on how many times they can be forgiven. And Jesus' response was, no, not seven times, 77 times. Jesus was saying, in other words, there should be unlimited forgiveness, that we should not keep count of someone's trespasses. But you might ask, how then do we keep the offender accountable? Here's how we keep the offender accountable. The Bible says, if your brother or sister sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. So we point out the offense. And as much as it depends on us, we guard against enabling the offender to re repeat the offense. Does that mean that the offender might not offend again? Surely not. But we will do the, the Christian thing, the loving thing, point out the sin and move on. Jesus, in his response to Peter's question, went on to share a parable about forgiveness, about the, the master who forgave the large debt. In that parable, Jesus shows us that forgiveness is about love and mercy. That's the storyline in that parable. Lavish forgiveness of the master. And that master is God. We're told in that parable that the servant owed 10,000 talents, an astronomical sum, a debt he couldn't pay. And, and the master forgave him the entire debt when in humility he asked for time to pay. Why? The master was merciful. But this parable also tells us that that same slave went out and came upon a fellow slave who owed him 100 denarii. And he seized him by the throat and he said, pay what you owe. And when the fellow slave pleaded with him, have patience with me and I'll pay you, he threw him into prison until he could pay the whole debt. The servant is us, you and me. We want God to be merciful to us, but we don't always want to 
extend mercy to our sisters and brothers. We want them to be held accountable. We want them to be punished. But do we have a right to that feeling and that, that attitude when we ourselves are in need of forgiveness? We pray the Lord's Prayer often. And in that prayer, we say, forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Do we really forgive? Or do we continue to hold a grudge? The Apostle Paul in his letter to the Ephesian Christians was making the same point when he, gave, when he advised the new converts about how they ought to live. Paul advised them, be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. We are called to forgive. By Esau's action, we can tell that he had forgiven Jacob. He ran to meet his brother, the older brother running to meet the younger brother. And not only running to meet him, when he met him, he hugged him and kissed him and wept for joy, no doubt. Not once did he mention the stolen birthright and blessing. He was just glad to see his brother alive after 20 years. Over the years, he must have longed to see Jacob's face and to see it come to pass gave him such joy. Esau's actions shows how lavish he is in his forgiveness of Jacob and that he offered to journey with Jacob and his family. That was so he could protect them as they traveled along. And when Jacob refused, he offered to leave some of his men with them to accompany them. Esau's welcome was devoid of hatred, malice, unforgiveness. Esau's welcome evoked this response from Jacob. Jacob said, for truly to see your face is like seeing the face of God. Esau had been healed of the wound inflicted by Jacob's deceit and was able to forgive his brother. When we forgive our sisters and brothers, we take on the image and likeness of God. And we too will look like, we too will show the world the face of God. When we forgive, we take on the image and likeness of God and we reflect the love and mercy of God. That is why Jacob could say that to see Esau's face is like seeing the face of God. Esau was also very kind. For Jacob asked, why should my Lord be so kind to me. He could not understand how Esau could be so kind to him after all that he had done. Jacob knew that he did not deserve kindness from his brother. Brothers and sisters, forgiveness is not about justice. It is about mercy. And Esau showed mercy. And that is why we too must show mercy. And we can show mercy by forgiving each other. Far too often we look at it through a justice lens. We do not need to be looking at our brothers and sisters 
in the justice mindset. I think that makes it difficult for us to forgive. We should look at it through mercy. For that's how God looks at us. And that's how God is able to show us unmerited grace and favor. In closing, I say, if God has been merciful to us, would it be asking too much of us to have mercy on our sisters and brothers? Forgiveness is a manifestation of mercy. Therefore, we ought to forgive our brothers and sisters, not seven times, not 77 times. We ought to offer unlimited forgiveness for our brothers and sisters because forgiveness is a manifestation of mercy. In the name of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. have shown us such great love. Help us, dear God, to reflect that love. It is because of your great love for us that we are forgiven. Help us to love our sisters and brothers with a love like yours so that we too can forgive our brothers and sisters when they sin against us. Amen.
Thank you for being a part of our daily devotion. We trust it has been a blessing to you. Now together, let us hold fast to his word and may it dwell in all of us richly.